So I've not been feeling so clever today. I've battled through, you know, always a warrior and everything. I started work at half past six this morning, or rather I got up at half past six this morning. <laughs> <laughs> it's not really starting work, is it? Helping the kids get ready for school this morning and then started work around about half past eight. It's now six o'clock at night and the day is not done. I've just broken a nail. What else could go wrong? I know third world problems and all that, but I have new makeup to play with. So all is well with the world. So a lot of this stuff I have tried already. Not on camera though. I've been trying this off camera over the weekend and some of it I've enjoyed. Some of it I've thought, mm, I'm not quite sure what all the fuss is about. And one of them is gonna be a first impression. So we're gonna get straight on with it. If you're new here, hi, my name's Gemma. I upload new content on YouTube every single week. I would love it if at some point in this video you're finding it helpful or entertaining in some way. <laughs> <laughs> please consider coming and joining the Pampered Wolf Pack by clicking the like button, the subscribe button and the notification bell. So I have really made an effort for you today. I've not put any extra jewellery on. These are just the pieces that I tend to sleep in overnight. I've got all of my comfies on, a brand new pair of jogging bottoms. Just wanted to feel comfortable today. And out comes the headband. I promise I will look more put together by the end of this video. Maybe I shouldn't have promised. Let's keep all fingers crossed. Well, you know, we like to keep it real on this channel. I mean, who doesn't often think I cannot put jeans on today? I just, you know, want to be able to expand where I need to expand. <laughs> P. Louise base in the shade 2.5. I'm just going to spread that around my eyelids and just let that dry down no powder on top of it. I'm just gonna let it dry down for about a minute or so before I apply the shadow on the top. And I have a brand new shadow palette to share with you. And this is my first impressions. I actually haven't tried this out yet. I've actually been quite lazy with my makeup this weekend. I know, me, lazy, shock horror, but not had a lazy weekend, just lazy with the makeup. I just wanted very quick makeup. And the majority of the makeup that I'm gonna be using in this video today lends itself superbly to really quick makeup. With the exception of this palette, obviously I'm sure you can do a really quick eyeshadow look with this. This is from NARS and it's the NARS Orgasm Rising Eyeshadow Palette. And it's another one of those that's really difficult to get into. My mum came over the other day and wanted to open this palette and she couldn't get into it either. So it's not just me with my clumsy pig trotter fingers. My mum couldn't do it either. So, you know, I feel a little better about myself now. This is such a beautiful palette. As you can see, it's not even been swatched, but I will show you the swatches on the screen now. So from left to right, we've got Hot Wired, A Golden Shimmer, High Speed, A Sparkling Opal, Orgasm, a peachy pink with a gold shimmer, Seven Heaven, a matte sand, Seduced, a sparkling amber, Reckless, a satin terracotta, Push It, a matte warm chestnut, Faster Pussycat, a metallic copper, and Galapagos, a bitter chocolate infused with gold. I've got to say, I am one of those people that I'm a bit disappointed that it doesn't have more mattes within this. I think it lends itself really well to having maybe three mattes, three shimmers, and three satin shades. I think that would have been a really nice array of options in here, but I didn't invent the palette. So we're just working with what we're working with. I'm gonna go in with this shade here on my BK Beauty 211 brush. Such a beautiful shade knock off the excess and I'm just placing that exactly where I want it. Usually I'd go in with a really fluffy brush and recently I've started to really place my shadows a little bit more precisely and then go in with a fluffy brush and blend it out. Then I'm gonna go in with my 201 BK Beauty brush and just really, really lightly stroke that across. Then go into this more terracotta shade. Is it called terracotta? It's called Push It. I was expecting this to have a little bit more pigment than it actually has. 
So this shade is a little bit weaker, maybe it's just because I'm placing it on top of the shadow. Going back to that fluffy brush, no circular movements, just windscreen wiper, very, very gentle pressure. I think I'm going to create more of a halo eye. I was going to do my usual everyday look, but let's go for something slightly different today. So I'm going to go back to the original matte shade that we first went into. I'm just placing a little bit of that in the corner. And then again, a tiny bit of push it. I'm going to go for the gold because it's screaming at me. And I'm just popping it right at the centre and lifting it all the way up. And I'm actually going to go slightly over the crease. Then we're going to mirror this on the lower lash line as well once I've finished all of my concealer and the rest of my base. So pretty, so pretty. So I'm gonna take my BK Beauty 211 brush, which is that really nice, small, fluffy brush, and I'm just going to feather in the shades on either side. So I finished my other eye and I've also done my brows off camera. You've seen me do it loads of times before so I thought I wouldn't bore you again. But for those of you that are interested, the products that I've used are the Got To Be Brows and Edges from Schwarzkopf and also the Lift and Snatch in the shade Ash Brown from NYX. The best brow pen in my opinion that has ever been on the market. So I'm gonna come back to my eye look when I've done the rest of my base. But we're going to move on to concealer. Now this is a brand new concealer out on the market and it's from MAC Cosmetics. This is the Studio Fix Everywhere All Over Face Pen. Now this is supposed to be used as a concealer but can be used all over the face. It's a really expensive way of using this product if you do decide to use it as a foundation because it's £28 and you only get 12 mils. So perfectly fine in my opinion for a concealer if it's a good one but I'd be a little hesitant using this as a foundation just because you know it's expensive for a foundation, 12 mils, 28 quid. Hmm. So firstly, I've got to say I love this packaging. It's got a push button on one end and then the product is dispensed out of the pen end. You can dispense this directly onto the skin without the use of a doe foot applicator or anything that's then going back into the tube. So for hygiene reasons, that's really good. I'm going to apply this on the back of my hand as per usual. I've gone for the shade NC13. So I'm just going to apply one pump onto the back. Oh, I've locked it. Hang on. <laughs> you can lock this just in case you're going on holiday, if it's in your luggage. So it's a great feature unless you forget. So just pop this on the back of my hand for you so you can see the consistency. So that is one pump. So it's really good at dispensing a very small amount of product. So you're not gonna get too much product on your skin at one time, which I think is great for a concealer. And I'm still not gonna probably use that amount, but you can apply it less if you want to. So it's a really nice thin cream consistency. I'm gonna apply this directly underneath my eyes and pad this out with my finger. It definitely has coverage. Not sure if I've got the exact shade that I should, but we will go with it for the time being. Once I've got the rest of my products on, it should blend in really, really beautifully. This isn't a shade for me that I can blend this into bare skin, so this wouldn't be the concealer that I would go for if I was wanting a completely no makeup day, I just wanted to apply a concealer just to cancel out some of my dark circles and make me look a little bit fresher. This is a little bit too much coverage for that. So I'm just gonna apply a little bit more just over 
my darker areas to make sure I've got maximum coverage and none of that darkness and pigmentation is poking through. You do have to be really careful how much of this product you apply at one time because it does dry down incredibly fast. So if you do apply too much, it's very difficult to try and remove it or push it in with the warmth of your finger. Very, very difficult and it can end up looking very heavy and very makeupy and start to crease very quickly. So little amounts and build it up would be my recommendation. Regardless of how much I enjoy this concealer, and I do think it is an excellent concealer, definitely worth trying if you want to give it a go. It's definitely not gonna take over from my Ride or Die concealer, and I don't think it'll even make it in my top drawer for the main reason that I have other concealers in my collection that I find look more flattering on my under eyes than this one. I mean, as the day goes on, I think this one accentuates any fine lines that I have underneath my eyes rather than gliding over them and blurring them out. That is the only reason this won't make it into my top drawer. I do think it looks nice though, and it's weightless, it's a really thin consistency, sinks into the skin really nicely, dries down really quickly so it's easy to build, but I don't think it's quite right for me. Now that I've completed my under eye concealer and another positive that I forgot to mention, shame on me, is that I don't feel like I need to set this in place with a powder. So if you are one of those people that really despises powder underneath your eyes, this one may be worth giving a go because I just feel like once this is set, it is going nowhere. So I'm gonna pick up the NARS Orgasm Rising Palette once again, go into the first matte shade that we use with my Refa 03 brush, pack that on, take a little bit of the excess off and just pencil that underneath. And then again from the inner corner, and then I'm gonna go back in, right in the center with this goldy shimmer which is to die for. It's not too sparkly. It's actually quite a wearable gold, I would say. Going again to the gold. And pop that right in the center. And I'm gonna build that up to make it look a little bit punchier. This is one of those shades that once it hits the light, gives that beautiful glow. Every time I lift my head up, you can see a little bit of the sparkle, but when my head's down, it's much more muted. And then once I've done that, I'm just gonna take some of the terracotta brown and just dust that on that outside edge just to connect the dots. Because the NARS palette doesn't have a really, really deep brown or a black in there, I'm gonna go to my go-to palette for on the go. This is the Charlotte Tilbury The Super Nudes Easy Eye Palette. I pretty much use this on a daily basis when I'm not having a lazy day. I just think it is such a beautiful neutral palette, extremely wearable across the board, regardless of what age you are you can make this work. It's such a lovely palette and all mattes, all of them, which I just think is amazing. So I'm just going to create a little soft wing and join that up. I'm not going over the entire lid, probably about halfway across and then stop and then bring it down and attach together and just soften that off. Next product, this is actually a product that I am really excited about. It's one that has not been off my skin for the last four or so days. I have really enjoyed using it. It's from Patrick Tarr and it's called the Cream Foundation and Finishing Powder Duo. And as you can see, it's already been heavily used. It does have a bit of a fold over there so that you, when you're using the powder, you don't get the foundation in your powder brush. So there's a little protective shield over the top there. I am the shade Fair 3 and it's a really decent colour match for me. Now the only way that I've been applying this is with a damp beauty sponge. So I'm just padding that into the product and then just, just see, look, look how beautiful that is. 
so stunning. This comes in 20 different shades and it is quite pricey. I wish that he had done both of these products individually because I think I'm gonna get way more use out of the foundation than I am the powder. And I've had a look at the reviews on the website and uh, there's so many people saying the same thing. A lot of people saying that they don't really like the foundation but they love the powder and some people saying that they love the foundation but they're not keen on the powder. So I like both but I'm not blown away by the powder. I do think it's quite blurring on the skin but nothing to write home about. So if I could buy these individually, that would definitely suit me. And although it's a cream product, it doesn't feel overly emollient. I do feel like this one, after continued wear, this does disappear off my chin. I don't feel like it disappears off my nose, but definitely yesterday when I wore this, and I did have a very busy day yesterday, this came off the tip of my chin. And I've also got a couple of pimples there today after I've been using this for the last four days. Whether that is because of this foundation, I do not know, but um, they're definitely there. I definitely think this looks beautiful. I love this foundation. I think it looks very flattering on my over 40 skin. This does lift though, this is not going to be transfer resistant. It gives a really nice medium coverage, but if you are going to be placing your phone to your face throughout the day, this is going to get all over your phone. So if that puts you off, this will not be for you. I even douse this with a setting spray and it does the same. So just be warned, it's not one that is going to withstand a lot of face touching. I do think it looks very flattering on my skin and it does last a really decent amount of time. Yesterday, I think I wore it for a good 12 hours. It looked beautiful apart from the tip of my chin that it completely worn off, but maybe I was touching my face a lot yesterday. We went to the Sheffield United match where we um, beat Blackburn 3-2 and we're now into the FA Cup semi-finals. We're going to Wembley, yes. So may have been the wrong day to properly test this one out, but I just, I really like it. Really, really like it. Triumph. While we're talking about the foundation, let's try out the powder on one half of my face. I have another powder to try in this video as well, but let's just go for one half of my face with the Patrick Tar powder. I'm just popping this on the back of a puff and then just taking off the excess. This is a very creamy powder. It's not a very dry powder. You don't get a lot of kick up on the pan when you're pressing into here. I, I don't know what I think about that. It's not going to make your skin look super, super dry, which I think is a great thing. But also if you're trying to pick this up on a brush, it's not as easy as if you're using a powder puff. I mean, look at that. Look, without powder, with powder. Complete personal preference, which one you go for, but I do find that this is incredibly blurring. But you do, again, have to be very careful how much you're applying, especially with the consistency of the powder. Very easy to over apply, but I do think it's beautiful. While we're talking about powders, let's have a look at the brand new MAC Studio Fix Pro Set and Blur Powder. This is a weightless, loose powder. I haven't used this massively over the last few days. I tried it out in a video um, off camera, made the mistake of putting it underneath my eyes. It's not great, just in case you were wondering. Not great. So uh, I'm gonna use the powder puff that actually comes with the product as we've just applied the Patrick Tar powder with a puff. Let's do the same on the other side. Now I do love a loose powder. I prefer a loose powder to a pressed powder. You may have a difference of opinion, but I just find them easier to work with. However, I do find that even though this one is as blurring and as beautiful when you first apply it, 
doesn't last as long with the blurring as the Patrick Tarr powder. So it's definitely something to bear in mind if you are considering buying either or. I also find that the MAC slightly more drying and maybe that's because it's loose and not a creamy powder like the Patrick Tarr, but it definitely works. It's effective. I do think that this side of my face looks a little drier than this side of my face. This one I think is better at setting makeup. This one I think the Patrick Tarr is better at blurring the skin. That's my two penneth on that anyway. I do think they both look beautiful though. So I'm gonna use my Anastasia Beverly Hills Pro Pencil. This is an eyeshadow primer and also a color corrector. It's in the lightest shade that they do and I'm just dragging that underneath that wing. Now you don't need to have a wing if you skipped that step altogether but you do fancy having a really lifted look. This is a great way of really lifting the corner of the eye. So just apply a little bit of a lighter shade. Doesn't have to be this pencil. You can use any pencil or you can actually use a really fair eyeshadow. I prefer a matte really fair eyeshadow, but because I've got really fair skin anyway, I always struggle to find one that is light enough. Look how much more sculpted and lifted that eye looks to this eye that doesn't have any of that lighter shade underneath. It just finishes it off really nicely. Again, going back to the Orgasm Rising palette, this time I'm gonna go into the lightest shade, this lovely champagne gold. And I'm just gonna do an inner corner highlight to open that eye up a little bit more. And even on my fair skin, still gives me that pop. Then I'm gonna use a brand new mascara, which actually isn't brand new out on the market. This mascara has been around for a while, but they've introduced a new shade into the collection, which is number two, Uninhibited Brown. This is the YSL Lash Clash Mascara. Very difficult to say when you're tired. It's got a really lovely fluffy applicator and you can see the brown shade. It's a gorgeous, neutral, really lovely chocolatey brown shade. It's got a hint of red in there. It's, it's just gorgeous, it really is. It looks incredibly expensive and it just gives you that softer look. I'm really preferring a brown mascara at the moment just to give the look a bit more of a softness to it, not so harsh. And this one definitely gives volume. And I don't find that this one smudges either. I do have to powder my upper lids. So if my lids aren't powdered at all, if I've just gone in with a foundation and not powdered my eyelids, this will transfer slightly, but I find that any mascara, even a waterproof mascara, often transfers if I haven't powdered. Because this is quite a wide fluffy wand, if you do have a little bit of a shaky hand, you may find that you get this behind the lashes onto the upper lids. It's not a small dainty wand, it is quite chunky. But I do find that the mascara formula cleans off really nicely. Just let it dry down and then take a little cotton bud and with very gentle pressure, just remove the mascara from the skin behind the lashes. This is such a classy color and the formula is very easy to build without being clumpy. There's not masses on the brush at one time. So just a couple of coats and you are well away. If you want that uber volume, three coats will be necessary. Just gonna apply a little bit of my Victoria Beckham bronzing brick just to give myself back a little bit of dimension. I will list all the brushes that I've used for each product in the description box for anybody that wants to know which brush is which, it will be listed down there. Before I forget, I'm just gonna take some of the MAC Studio Fix powder and just go around the edges of my eyeshadow just to make sure it's super, super blended into bare skin. I want a really nice, even 
effortless blend. And then we're gonna use some of this Chanel blush. This is the Fantasy de Chanel and it's the Illuminating Blush Powder. How gorgeous is this? Now, I don't usually go for a pinky blush. Usually mine are more corals or more peachy tones, but so many people were raving about this and it was sold out absolutely everywhere. It's now back in stock. For how long? I've no idea. By the time this video goes live, it may be out of stock again, but I'm hoping they will continue to restock as stock becomes available. So it's so beautiful. When I opened it, I thought, hmm, not gonna be for me. It's got a silvery shimmer on the surface. It's not just pink and I just had the feeling that it was going to be way too cool toned for my neutral skin. So um, I was pleasantly surprised when I tried it for the first time the other day and also pleasantly surprised at the amount of pigment that you get from one swipe in the pan because usually the Chanel blushes for me, you have to really build them up they're not super punchy immediately. Whereas this one, I find it's got a little bit more pigment in than the other Chanel blushes that I've tried in the past. Look how beautiful that is. This is a proper English rose blush. If you ever wanted to try an English rose blush, you wanted that skipping through the field sort of flush to the cheek, this is it. I mean, stunning absolutely magical on the cheek. I still don't think that this is the most complimentary blush that I've ever used on my skin tone, but the sheen, that glow from within is worth it for me. Do I wish it had a little bit more of an orangey undertone? Yes, I do. Will that stop me from using it? No. <laughs> So I've just lined my lips using the Victoria Beckham Lip Definer in the shade 02, favorite shade, absolutely love it. We're gonna move on to a brand new product that is affordable because this one I'm so super excited about. I've worn this all weekend and it, it does not disappoint and it's affordable. Did I mention it was affordable? It's affordable and I think it is superb. Now, there is one drawback to this and it's also a positive. It's incredibly soft. So I'm not quite sure how long this is going to last because I keep over applying it and having to remove product because it is so soft. In the summer, this is probably gonna melt. So um, I would say that if your lips are dry like mine, I mean, mine are incredibly dry at the moment, this is going to be your new best friend if you like a really beautiful lip balm tint. I mean, this has got more pigment in here than an actual tint, so it's not really a tint. It looks very much like the Charlotte Tilbury Happy Kisses, but dare I say, I prefer this packaging to the Charlotte Tilbury packaging, which I think looks incredibly cheap and nasty. This, I mean, they've even made an effort with this. It's it's nothing to write home about. It is still plastic, but I do think it looks classier than the Charlotte Tilbury one. So, triumph for evolution there. Let me show you how soft and squidgy this actually is. I mean, this really does melt as soon as it hits the lips. And it's a bit of a smudgy one. I'm not selling it to you, am I? We can only be honest here. This is a drawback and a positive at the same time. It feels lovely on. It really does. It's got a bit of a minty, fresh scent and flavour to it. This would probably be better packaged within a tube rather than lipstick format because then you could choose how much you dispensed and then you'd apply it with your finger rather than getting in a bit of a mess with the whole tube application because it is so soft. But there are several shades to choose from. The shade that I have is Mocha Shine and it's, it's a stunner. It really is beautiful. 
Considering this is a balm, this also lasts a really good amount of time. It does transfer on anything that you're eating or drinking, so you will have to reapply, but if you're not going to be eating or drinking anything, if you're just wanting to apply this as a lip balm, it does last a good few hours before you're going to need to reapply. I, I really, really love this. So that's it for this video. I really hope you've enjoyed it. I do think the overall look would have looked a tad nicer with a different colour blush because this colour blush, it's not that it's the wrong undertone for my complexion, it's the wrong undertone for the eye look and also the lips as well. It looks a little bit of a mishmash, a bit wishy-washy, so that's probably what I would change, but I really like the blush. Wanted to wear the blush. Thank you so much for watching till the end of this video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and hope to see you all in the next one. Bye everyone.